even though you may come up with a system that at an economical price gets rid of CO2, the fact that it comes at a price of any kind means that you won't get governments to support it, even though that's what will save the world and nothing else will. mentioned this organization called the Climate Restoration Foundation and they had a meeting in Rome in March and started it off and it's a, a really keen character called Peter Fikowski from California uh, with some others including uh, Leslie Field who's also from California she wants to just to cover the, the Arctic with beads to, to increase the... The, um, the meeting was very serious stuff. Their principle was, we've got to get the climate back to the 19th century, so which means we want to get CO2 back to 300. Let and, me roll my eyes to that yeah. a couple of times, okay? <laughs> well, I, they did admit that was perhaps an exception. I'll take 350 myself, yeah. okay? And even 400 is an achievement. But anyway, they, that's what they want, to, to restore the climate, and so, which is at least a clear aim. I mean, at least they're not saying, oh, let's reduce our carbon dioxide emissions, let's, let's, uh, because they know that we're not going to do that and we aren't doing it and we'll never be able to get it down enough. I wanted to take a se exception to that. Um, if no, for no other reason on the technical grounds that the collapse of civilization will reduce our carbon emissions. Mm. So the question is not if they will be reduced, but whether, whether they will be reduced in a controlled, conscious fashion by our decision that we'll, our, our own lives and progeny are more important than profit, or whether they will be reduced by the, the other ultimate finality, which is that civilization will not continue in its current form, at least, when not only is Greece on fire, but Sweden is on fire, and Japan is on fire, and the United States is on fire, and Canada is on fire. When, when those conflagrations go far enough along, then we will see some changes. But the point that you and I know is that if we don't see changes well in advance of that, then at that late date, stopping the onslaught will be way more difficult, if, if at all possible. So are there any hopeful signs that you see in the world? Let's <laughs> give a little, a little well, airtime to hope. Okay, well, well I suppose my, my views about uh, what we can do to save ourselves revolve around really direct air capture. And there's, there's now... I think three pilot programs going. One is uh, in Iceland that's taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere chemically and putting it into rocks which react with the carbon dioxide and give you a, a permanent removal system. And then there's a company in Squamish, British Columbia that I've been looking at and in fact they were looking for somebody to work for them when I applied for that but they must have had thousands of applicants. They've got a fairly complex system where via an additional input of energy from solar power turning it into biofuel. Um, it's it's a, a little bit excessively complicated but uh, the principle is good. It's a pilot plant and the trouble with all these small companies is how do you get a, something to go beyond a pilot plant to something that can be scaled up to save the world? And in many cases, or at least in two cases I know of, the companies involved have sort of given up because they can't get the input of funding to scale up their work into a system whereby you, you routinely get rid of CO2. So the, the terrible problem is that that if you can find a way to get rid of CO2 from the atmosphere um, without trying to use it to make some new chemical, 
but just taking it out of the atmosphere to save the world, you've had it because nobody's going to pay for that. Mm-hmm. And, and yet, that's what will save the world, that we have to, with a, with a proper Manhattan Project, we, we, the people of the world, would need to pay to, to have enough plants um, dealing with CO2 to get rid of enough CO2 to stop the climate from becoming fatal. Uh, I would have thought that so obvious that, that you wouldn't need to think about it. But it turns out it's not, it's not obvious that, that even though you may come up with a system that at, a, at an economical price gets rid of CO2, the fact that it comes at a price of any kind means that you won't get governments to support it, even though that's what will save the world and nothing else will. Again, our economic system is so stupid, is so poorly designed that the destruction of the environment, the destruction of the current and future generations is nowhere in the calculation. And what the feeling I get is, is finding a way, an economic way of getting rid of CO2 out of the atmosphere. It's not, it's not rocket science. It's, it's chemistry that is already known. And it's just a matter, a bit like solar power. We know the chemistry, we know the physics. We just have to develop the engineering so that it's cheaper. And solar power has come incredibly down in price. So if the technology that enables you to take CO2 out of the atmosphere can be made cheaper, all it needs is research. And it's, and it's not rocket science research. It's not trying, you know, trying to find the, the unified field theory. It's <laughs> trying to just trying to, to find a cheaper way to get that carbon dioxide absorbed onto something. The trouble is, if we're going to save the world, we have to remove 40 billion tons of CO2 per year, which means that's a, a massive amount of CO2 to be turned into something else. There isn't anything else that we need on the planet that we need 40 billion tons of, even if we turn it into sort of road mending material, which has been proposed. You know, there, aren't, there isn't 40 billion tons of road material needed, needed on the world. In the end, you're going to have to have 40 billion tons of stuff piled up somewhere that you can't sell and can't make into anything. Well, let me challenge that only with the idea that if that 40 billion tons of carbon removal were converted into a, a fuel that could be used in aircraft and, and our uh, global truck and car fleet, and if we could tame the gonzo fossil fuel extraction community, you know, it's unfathomable what goes through these people's minds. But if the Koch brothers, if they had a realization that they could be making just as much money or more by helping heal the planet as they are by helping destroy the planet, then it's within their capacity to change things, Hmm. you know? Well, there is some hope because it seems they've had a falling out with Donald Trump. Yeah, there is hope. There is hope. Um, There's always hope. It may be vain hope, but I say, look, even if there is no hope of, of saving humanity, the legacy we leave is whether or not we've killed off all of nature or how much of the biosphere, how many species. I don't want to separate humanity from life on Earth. Mm. I want the, we have to have the basic realization that we are part of life on Earth and we can't destroy the biosphere without destroying ourselves. Mm.